Okay. <coughs> Assalamualaikum uh, and uh, very good morning everyone. Can you all hear me? Can you all hear me? Sorry. Yes, bro. Oh, okay. All right. Yes, yes bro. Good okay, morning. Thank you. Okay, uh, I'm Romaniza Osman, uh, the Deputy Dean of Innovative Industry and Sustainability Science, and we'll be sharing the session for today. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to welcome you to the first series of Research Rockstar Tour. Thank you for joining us uh, today, and I hope uh, everyone is well and healthy uh, despite the critical pandemic condition out there. First, let me introduce you to this event. This event will bring researchers who will present their expertise and the focus would be on how these researchers or rock stars can contribute their expertise to other research areas or other fields. Uh, for example, if the rock star is a biologist, how can he or she contribute to the business or law school? So for today, the first series will bring you to the theme that is becoming a cornerstone of the country, which is Industry Revolution 4.0 or IR 4.0, with the aim to accelerate Malaysia to move towards IR 4.0. So the invited speakers for today in a, uh, in a moment will share with us their expertise and how they contribute to IR 4.0. On the same note, we also hope that this session will uh, shed light on how to conduct multidisciplinary research or diversify your expertise. Uh, before we begin the session, uh, I would like to invite uh, our acting coordinator, Professor Dr. Saiful Anwar Kasani, to give a welcoming remark. <coughs> okay, uh, Assalamualaikum, Saudara, Saudara, uh, thank you, Prof. Nomaniza. Uh, can you hear me, everyone? Boleh? Yes, Prof. All right, cool. Okay, so first of all, I'd like to thank uh, uh, everyone, particularly the uh, speakers, for agreeing to come on for today's session. So as already described by Prof. Nomaniza, this is uh, a session that we call the Research Rockstar Tour. Now, uh, as also already mentioned, the idea is to get people from different disciplines to actually present their work, the type of work they're capable of, their expertise, how they can contribute. But the, what makes this session different is that uh, the presentations will be less academic, if you will. It is more of a semi-formal discussion, telling people from different disciplines uh, what you can do for them and how they may be part of your team. So as you can see from the list of speakers today, it's a very eclectic mix of individuals from uh, different disciplines and from different faculties. And uh, the way it was originally planned for the Rockstar Tour is for us to physically be moving from one faculty to another and do the presentations within the respective faculties where they act as co-hosts. But as you know, we have the pandemic at the moment and we cannot do that. So we're doing it virtually. And for this particular session, the host is the Faculty of Engineering. And I thank the uh, Faculty of Engineering for helping us to uh, uh, get people to attend the session. So I hope uh, today's rather different approach of uh, scientific discourse or academic discourse will allow us to understand better how others are doing their work and perhaps eventually foster collaboration for interdisciplinary research. So I thank you everyone again for your attendance and I pass back to our MC today, Prof. Namaliza. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Prof. Saifu. So, and now, uh, without further ado, it is my great pleasure to invite uh, Assistant Professor Dr. Juan Junqing, the Deputy Dean of Frontiers of the Natural World, to begin and moderate our session. Dr. Juan, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Prof. Uh, Nomaniza. A uh, very good morning to everyone, and thank you for attending this uh, Rockstar Tour. This is the first series of 2021. Today, we have a uh, fortunate to have uh, four speakers from uh, three different uh, faculties, right, for this uh, uh, Rockstar tour, okay. And before I forget, uh, I want to make some uh, small announcements. Uh, actually, uh, just coincidence, I received uh, what we call a, a news, okay, about this Industry 4.0 iConnect network. This is organized by ASN Academic Science Malaysia, Nano Malaysia and the Crest. So uh, the what we call the link is here. Okay. So I will share in chat uh, the link for this event. 
So those are uh, speakers and also attending this uh, Rockstar tour, you may go and check out this uh, very interesting uh, networking. I've been told also the grant is available. So don't miss these uh, opportunities to look at the uh, collaborative networks. Right? So we are also encouraging people to apply for the uh, external grants. Okay, come back to our because come back to our programs because I want to make this announcement later on. It'll be late and then some people will be uh, left. So better announce uh, in these uh, at at this moment. So again, I encourage everyone to check out this uh, industry 4.0 iConnect network. Come back to our program. So we have a very four uh, very uh, well known uh, scientists working in the IR 4.0. Okay. So uh, after the sharing session with each of these speakers, then we have uh, discussions and Q&A, okay? So don't go away. After the uh, presentation, we have uh, discussions and Q&A sessions. So before uh, further ado, let me introduce our first speaker, Professor Dr. Sarifuddin Mohamad Zin. Professor Sarifuddin is a professor in the Department of Chemistry, Faculty of Science, he obtained his first degree from Imperial College UK and obtained his PhD degree in 1995 from University of London. Uh, Prof. Sharifuddin is actively engaged in teaching, research and management work. His interest centered in the usage of computer in chemistry and chemical education, including the interest of chemical things, IOCT. Prof. Sharifuddin is actively managing the chemistry innovation space UMCIS. UMCIS is a market maker space and also collaborative space for making, learning, exploring, and sharing projects and ideas related to audio microcontroller, 3D printing, Internet of Things, industrial revolutions, and also automations. He was involved in many projects associated with the lab automations. So, for uh, our news, I would like to invite um, Prof. Sharifuddin. Prof, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning. Okay, um, um, I have about 15 minutes, right, to uh, present everything. Yeah, uh, each speaker will be giving uh, 15 minutes. Okay, after that, we have a Q&A session, 30 minutes. So, I'll just share my screen. Hold on. Okay. Right, so everybody can see the screen? Yeah, Prof. Uh, okay. it's clear. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. So in this 15 minutes, um, I'll be talking about uh, the establishment of the makerspace at UM. So um, um, I think two years ago, um, a year or two years before the uh, pandemic started. So uh, a group of us um, uh, came together in the chemistry department and we thought that uh, it would be a good idea to come up with a, a sort of a maker space that would allow uh, uh, students and staff to be involved in um, sort of a technology extension of uh, the maker culture. So uh, one of the most important ob objectives that we have in mind is to inculcate the maker culture uh, within uh, the department, at least for that uh, at that time, uh, amongst students and staff. So students and staff can come to the uh, space and they can actually use uh, um, the 3D printers that we have and uh, some of the microcontrollers that we also have uh, and incorporate those uh, technologies into their projects. Yeah. So uh, we established the UMCIS, uh, me and Dr. Tay, and a few other staff who came together and um, uh, we thought of some of the um, uh, things that we can actually uh, teach in order to inculcate this uh, culture. Uh, things like uh, uh, the usage of 3D printers, 3D design, um, use of microcontrollers like Arduino, um, for example, and usage of Excel in a very um, creative, in very creative ways, coding. So all of this is done by, by chemists. Now, I would like to stress that this is done all by chemists. Now, the reason for me to say, those, uh, to say that is that uh, um, 
the uh, uh, the world of technology, especially uh, um, the use of of computing technology, is so open today nowadays that even chemists who, who finish, I mean, as a chemist, we don't really have any knowledge of electronics or, or, or coding, but uh, we are able to actually inculcate this culture uh, amongst students and staff. And, and we can actually see students and staff getting involved in these things and uh, actually create and innovate in a lot of things. I will show you some pictures later on. Uh, the, the, there are many slides, but most of them are just pictures, just to show you uh, what, what have we achieved in, 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 uh, in the department. So um, from UMCIS, uh, then, uh, yeah, as I say, we, we, we wanted to inculcate uh, the maker culture in teaching, learning, and research. So we started with the MCIS, and then uh, we had the opportunity, the, uh, uh, the university or the KPT, uh, they, they offered uh, uh, a small grant for, to all uh, public universities to start off maker culture. Uh, I mean, to start off a, 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 a maker space yeah, for the university. Some universities have already, you know, um, been in front. They already have their own maker space. So that money is basically to enhance their maker space. In UM, we have a very, uh, um, you know, um, distributed um, uh, interest in maker space. So in engineering, in some other faculties, we do have um, labs or spaces like this, but we do not have a, a centralized, um, organized administration of, um, you know, such as uh, uh, some newer universities who actually have established maker space. So uh, we had the opportunity to. Um, be involved in the uh, establishment of the maker space. Uh, we get uh, or we got eighty thousand ringgit uh, to buy the equipments and everything. So uh, the UMCIS equipments that we bought uh, was from uh, uh, a grant that we applied specifically to establish UMCIS. Uh, and then when we got the eighty k, uh, we managed to get the UM space. Uh, sorry, the, the UM maker space to be established. Uh, it is currently located in Bangunan Makmal Kimia. Uh, but we're going to move that because Bangunan Ma'amal Kimia is a bit, uh, you know, um, upstream, <laughs> Ulu. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the, the next proposed uh, uh, space for Makerspace UM is at the uh, ex-CIMB bank. So the whole floor uh, will be dedicated to uh, Makerspace at UM. Okay? I'm not sure when this will be, uh, um, you know, established, maybe in a year or a few more. Yes, I do not know. Yeah, but that was the proposed new location. So uh, for eighty thousand ringgit, we were able to buy twenty-two three uh, D printers, uh, FDA and SLA, um, uh, filament mask, PCs, oscilloscopes, pens, uh, a forty watt laser engraver, and we also bought some uh, uh, Arduino, Raspberry Pi, you know, um, all, all the uh, training kits. So the intention that we have is to actually train students and staff and actually open up the maker space uh, for everyone you know, to come and um, create and innovate. So this is the maker space. So um, of course, in chemistry department, we don't have a proper maker space. It's actually a lab. So uh, the, you can see the uh, 3D printers are arranged in a boring way. In a, in a nice maker space, it's a, it's a, it's a space that has that nuance of creativity and innovation. So we hope to, to, to make that happen in the uh, next uh, proposed location. Yeah. So that's a maker space. There you go. It's practically a lab. Okay. Um, now, um, when we were uh, only having the UMCs, we already had uh, activities uh, created, uh, activities done. Um, unfortunately, it was not very long. I think it was um, about a year a year or maybe a year and a half before the pandemic started. And now things are not moving very fast as we wanted it to move. So amongst the activities that we have is this um, code club, yeah, where we get, uh, we invite students, school children to come and we teach them uh, coding. We work together with the Autobit, uh, with Autobotics Nam um, to come and, and help us in the, in the coding uh, classes. Yeah. Uh, we also, yeah, invited them to come to the uh, uh, maker space and uh, do some printing, you know, design and everything. Yeah? So uh, there are a few batches of students from different schools. We have open uh, chemistry day where we actually open up the maker space and, 
and students and staff can come in and try things out. Yeah, so uh, these are amongst the activities. This one happened in 15th August 2019, where we were visited by uh, Sekolah Menengah Jenis Kebangsaan Xing Chung. Uh, we also have um, uh, 3D design and printing workshop, okay, where students come and actually uh, uh, they were taught how to uh, design in three dimension and print. Um, there are also sharing sessions on again 3D printing where staff uh, of the department and the faculty they were invited to come and. Uh, we teach them how to actually do 3D design and printing as well. Yeah. Um, what is this? Yeah, again, Arduino classes, uh, Python, you know, mostly for kids. Uh, converting molecular structures into 3D models for 3D printing, augmented and virtual reality. Uh, we also uh, integrated uh the uh um the maker culture into some of our courses so in one of the courses master's course uh instrumental of uh, um, the master's program uh, instrumental chemical analysis in the lab automation course um the students are actually asked to um, i mean the main assignment for students to carry out is to uh, use the arduino uh microcontroller and they can they are they are free to use the maker space to print and everything uh, and 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 design something that is related to lab automation, and uh, these students have no knowledge whatsoever in ele electronics, in in coding, and yet after one semester they came up with really brilliant uh, and very innovative, um, um, uh, you know, results. If you look at that, there's a there's a lorry there, a toy lorry. Uh, one of the students actually used a design that is already available in the internet. Um, and um, use an ultrasound module to uh, allow the lorry to move around without hitting anything. And what he did was he added onto the lorry uh, some sensors, gas sensors, you know, uh, with alarms and everything. Uh, basically, the idea is to actually have uh, sort of an automated self-guiding lorry that goes into a, a building or something like that, you know, to detect whether there are uh, gas leaks or anything like that. Yeah? And, and a few other brilliant uh, um, innovations. I was quite surprised uh, to see students, you know, able to come up with such ideas. It's just one semester. Uh, I don't teach them much about how to actually use these things. Um, uh, I sort of every week I would just give them give them a talk about half an hour, uh, some ideas about how to uh, use these uh, microcontrollers and uh, some ideas about uh, how the, the the microcontrollers can be used. And they came up with all the other, uh, the rest of the ideas, highly innovative and creative. And I think this is also very important for us to, uh, to, to inculcate this kind of mentality, not just in our teaching and learning, but also in our research, which I will show later on. Yeah? Uh, this is the uh, laser engraver. Okay, so um, uh, we uh, during the pandemic, we even contributed in uh, building masks um, for hospitals. Yeah. So we printed the uh, the uh, frame for, for the mask, yeah, and also an incubator there using the engraver. Um, of course, for for the chemistry department, we have uh, um, things which are you know quite expensive. You were to buy them, so we might as well print them. So we printed uh, plasticware for, for for our labs. Yeah. Um, now besides. Um, 3D printing, Arduino, microcontroller use. Uh, we also teach our staff and students. Uh, we have courses on uh, 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 coding and uh, Excel, for example. We are very interested in using Excel in ways which are not uh, conventional. Excel are not actually invite, uh, in, invented to, uh, to do those things um, uh, to students and to staff. So uh, we also have staff who actually uh, was so interested, she went on. And she designed for the chemistry department a Google Apps based uh, room booking system on Rohaida. Yeah. So uh, these are among the things that you can actually see. I, I mean, clear, um, direct results of teaching things which are not all not usually taught in in chemistry department. And uh, uh, staff and students find that these tools are actually very helpful in helping them to solve chemical problems. 
Right, uh, uh, research, for example, uh, there's one at the left there, a spin coater. Uh, the student actually uh, um, uh, the student actually designed this. Uh, spin coaters are quite expensive, uh, sometimes cost about 10 to 20,000 ringgit. So the student actually built a spin coater using uh, a moto that they get from, I think, from a CD player, right? Uh, and control the speed of the spin uh, so that they can control the, the thickness of the thin films, yeah? spin coater. And then there is a spec, uh, the photometer. Yeah, photometer combined with uh, visual basic, you can actually uh, have a proper photometer. Uh, it can be a good uh, uh, replacement for expensive photometers in the lab. Yeah, and a few other things, you know, a microscope there. Um, I mean, the students can actually think of a lot of things to, to help them solve uh, the problems they are uh, looking at using these technologies. Okay, uh, this is actually the, the, the TACE student. Um, it's an Arduino-based uh, flow leachate treatment system. Um, it's based on Arduino, so it's, everything is automated. Okay. Uh, this is a low-cost automated water quality monitoring system. So we have different sensors monitoring the water system, water quality of a lake or a river. Uh, and um, we use uh, ESP32 and uh, TTGO to, uh, to uh, basically um, pass the data yeah, to internet straight away. Yeah? Um, there are many different uh, designs as well, but uh, it's, 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 I think it is quite uh, appropriate and we are proud to say that uh, this thing is actually uh, from scratch designed and built by chemists. So um, uh, it just shows that uh, if in, in any fields that you, you, you are in, uh, you will find that there will always be uh, the use, that you will always find a use for, uh, for these microcontrollers uh, uh, to be used in solving your, your, your problems. Um, 20 years ago, um, microcontrollers or data acquisition modules. These are, these are actually the domain of engineers. We can't really do that unless, unless we, we, have, we take time to learn uh, coding, machine coding, you know, uh, assembly language, for example, in, in, in uh, uh, getting the modules to actually work for us. But nowadays with the uh, advent of open source hardware, uh, things are just available and they are made so easy. Yeah, the, uh, the, uh, the top layer where the machine or the, or, or the microcontroller interacts with the user is made so easy that uh, even uh, 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 researchers in the arts can actually use uh, these microcontrollers to solve their problems. Okay. Uh, this is a low-cost Arduino-based 3D printer, 3D printed auto titrator. So we, in, uh, we, we interface this with, uh, with Excel. And uh, you can actually take uh, real time uh, measurements of changes in concentration, yeah, uh, changes in pH uh, for a titration. And this is actually a third year project by student, uh, by BSc chemistry student Eng Jeng Bu. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's, 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 it's one of the examples of uh, using the technology available, accessible to people like us chemists uh, to solve our problems. Right, so uh, with the, uh, um, you know, the opportunity given to us to establish UMSYS and the makerspace at UM, UM uh, this enable us to do a lot of uh, activities uh, within the makerspace. Unfortunately, the pandemic, um, you know, stops us from doing more activities. Um, the equipments are there. We're going to move to a better uh, location. So um, basically, this is an invitation for every single person from any department, uh, any faculties to come and use the makerspace. There are a lot of uh, different uh, um, uh, users of things available in the makerspace that would help you to solve your own problems. I mean, straight away, I can think of, uh, uh, for biologists, for example, uh, to do things like, like what we did, you know, build built uh, instruments, sensors in helping us to solve uh, the problems in our research. Uh, of course, engineering, you know, can't say much about that. It's like, it's like everything is technology. Uh, even in the arts, you know, 
I was approached by the uh, Museum Asia uh, curator uh, who was thinking about uh, um, 3D printing and making, um, what do you call that? Uh, replicas of uh, pots yeah, that they have. Um, of course, uh, from the faculty of Alam Bena, they can come in and build models, you know, use the 3D printers available in the makerspace to build models. Um, everyone. Yeah, so I would like to invite every single person who uh, who uh, finds that, yeah, there is a possibility of using technology or inculcating the maker culture in your research to come to the maker space at UM, yeah, and start to use the, uh, the, the tools available. I'm sure with the new uh, uh, location and, of course, new grants, we will be able to uh, uh, increase uh, the capability, the capacity of the maker space, you know, to be able to cater for all sorts of things that would contribute to the inculcation of maker culture uh, in the University of Malaya. Yeah. So come to maker space for your teaching and learning research, or for just, you know, just for creative and innovation fun. Okay, I suppose that's about it. Maybe one day we can have a maker fair in New Zealand Malaya where everybody can showcase their. Uh, their creations and innovations in a fair. Uh, and uh, basically, in time, uh, make the maker culture in our teaching, learning, research, and even fun uh, a part of uh, a culture embedded in the teaching, learning, and research nuance already there in the University of Malaya. All right, I suppose that's about it. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, we'll be happy to discuss uh, and answer questions. Uh, concerning the use of microscope. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, thank you, Prof. Uh, Sharif Budin. We'll keep the questions later on after the, all the presentations. Uh, let's just move to our next speaker, Dr. Tay King Su. Dr. Tay uh, received the master of master degree and PhD degree in the environmental chemistry from University of Malaya. He joined the Department of Chemistry, Faculty of Science in 2012 as a senior lecturer. His research interests include chemicals oxidation in water treatments, advanced oxidation processes, environmental analysis, mass spectrometry, and also the Internet of Things. He is the author or co-author of more than 40 papers in international referred journals, and he has given several invited talks at international symposium. Uh, Dr. Tay is also the associate editor of Hardware X. Let's just welcome uh, Dr. Tay. So the floor is yours, Dr. Tay. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Zuan. <coughs> Can everyone hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clear. Okay, so uh, please allow me to share my slides. Yeah. <coughs> Okay, can oh, you see my slide? Yes, yes, we can see your slide. Okay, so uh, very good morning and salam sejahtera. <clears throat> I'm Tay from uh, Chemistry Department, Faculty of Science UM. Uh, I'm part of the team of uh, Makerspace at UM. So I think uh, Prof. Sarifuddin has presented some of our work uh, regarding R4.0. So I will start with uh, to introduce my core research. Uh, before I move to uh, the IR 4.0 or the research regarding uh, IR 4.0. <clears throat> so our main research is focused on uh, the study of the fates and behavior of emerging pollutants in water and water uh, wastewater treatment processes. So uh, I think most of us uh, may be aware or not aware, uh, our daily activities are highly related to uh, water pollution. So, for example, when we wake up in the morning, we brush our teeth with the toothpaste, uh, we wash our face with uh, the face wash, and then uh, we clean up our mouth using uh, mouthwash. And then these are the products we call it a personal care products. Uh, and then uh, when we just discarded it into the sink, it will most probably it will go into the environment, uh, like drain, water, uh, river water. And then uh, there are also other activities like uh, when we are sick, we take the maxin. So unfortunately, our body are not able to metabolize all this maxin. And then uh, some of the maxin will be uh, excreted from our body 
through uh, urine, feces, and uh, most of these, uh, uh, we call it uh, pollutants, will get into uh, the environments and end up in the water or wastewater treatment plants. So our main research is study the behavior or the face of uh, these pollutants uh, in the water and wastewater treatment plant. So emerging pollutants is something new. It is different from uh, some industrial chemical or like a pesticide where we have a regulation to control the release and the usage of these uh, chemicals. But for emerging pollutants, uh, we do not, so far we do not have a, a strict regulation on it. So people are dumping these uh, chemicals into the environment and into the environment continuously. <clears throat> so most likely uh, all these chemicals will end up in the water and wastewater treatment plant. So various uh, impact of these uh, emerging pollutants has been uh, uh, reported. So I just use one uh, single uh, one examples here. So the intersex of the male fish this is due to the exposure of the fish to the steroids. So we can see from this picture, uh, a male fish is having uh, testes and ovary. So this is one of the clearer impact that where I can show uh, it in the picture. So other impact is like uh, when the bacteria are exposed to antibiotics, it will create uh, antibiotic uh, resistant bacteria. <clears throat> so humans are, basically rely on the water treatment uh, to produce a clean drinking water or tap water, as well as cleaning up the water, uh, the waste water before releasing it into the environment. <clears throat> uh, I give, uh, this is a common uh, water treatment plant or water treatment processes. So we can see here, uh, this is the raw uh, domestic waste water from our toilet. If you go to the indoor water, you can see this. And then the first process that involved to clean up the water will be uh, the primary treatment to remove all the solids. If we're talking about the solids from the toilet, we, uh, definitely we know what is that solid is. And then after removal of uh, the solid, the water will move into uh, the secondary uh, treatment or biological treatment to remove any uh, substances which is soluble in water. And then before release the water into the environment, uh, the water will be disinfect using uh, in Malaysia. We are using chlorination to kill the harmful uh, bacteria or pathogen before releasing it into uh, the environment. So these are the process that we are relying on uh, to clean up our water uh, and the wastewater. Uh, unfortunately, this process is not effective in removing those emerging pollutants, or we call it a trace pollutant or the pollutant in a uh, smaller concentration. So I have a, a few examples here. These are the pharmaceuticals. Uh, it's reported in a, one of the review paper. So where you can see here, various kind of uh, pharmaceuticals. The, uh, this table is actually a very long table. I just take one uh, section. You can see uh, not all pharmaceuticals uh, can be uh, removed and it's appear in the final effluent. This final effluent will be released into the environment. And then uh, this is the, the table representing uh, the effectiveness of uh, drinking water treatment plant. So we can see in some of the country in Europe, US, so farmers trigger has been detected in uh, their tap waters. So unfortunately in Malaysia, we do not have this uh, data. So our main research will be focused on the, the behavior or the effects of these uh, emerging pollutants in the disinfection process. This is a disinfection process that involves uh, chemical oxidation. So I just use uh, one or two examples here. Uh, ozone oxidation. So in some of the uh, country like Europe, US, they are using uh, ozone for this infection. So this method, uh, if there are any pollutants that are untreated and get into the disinfection uh, process, so those pollutants will be converted into different kind of uh, byproducts. So eventually, if that water treatment process is effective, 
So all the chemical will be uh, ideally will be uh, converted into carbon dioxide and released into the air. But unfortunately, it doesn't happen that way because uh, it will be very costly if uh, we would like to convert all the uh, the pollutants or organics into carbon dioxide. And then for chlorination, you can see here, uh, this uh, Malaysia is using chlorination. So I believe uh, most of us have heard that uh, our water is containing chlorine. So this chlorine will convert uh, uh, some of the chemicals or pollutants into uh, chlorinated byproducts. And we found that these byproducts uh, is more harmful than uh, the parent compound. So this is a sotalo, it's a beta blocker. So it's used to treat uh, heart disease and the mufenamic acid is actually uh, a painkiller. So maybe uh, some researcher may argue that uh, the concentration of uh, the pharmaceuticals or the emerging pollutants is very low, so it is not significant to study it. But uh, nowadays, uh, all the byproducts has been detected in uh, our environment, so including the the effluents as well as the river water. So these chemicals will immerse in the environment as a new chemical entities, so it will make the pollution uh, worse if these byproducts uh, is more toxic. So this is how uh, this slide show how we interpret the data. So with a knowledge of uh, a mass spectrometry, we are able to uh, interpret how the chemical is break down. So our research group also focused on uh, the development of uh, advanced oxidation process for the treatment of uh, wastewater. So basically, uh, one of our research is focused on uh, the treatment of landfill leachate. Uh, for those who are not familiar, landfill leachate is actually a wastewater from the landfill. So uh, if we can see from this picture, maybe we are familiar with this. When the garbage truck uh, collected uh, the garbage from our house, so when they want to reduce the volume, they'll compress and then it's the water with bad, bad smell will be coming up from the, the trucks. And basically, if in the landfill, uh, the land, because of the huge amount of uh, the garbage, so the wastewater would look in uh, something like black in color. So we started uh, to develop the methods to uh, treat uh, this landfill leachate in a bench scale uh, experiment. And then later on, uh, my PhD student developed a continuous flow system uh, by using uh, Arduino microcontroller. So he has also built an app to uh, control uh, the continuous flow system. So basically, uh, our research on this are stopped here because we are looking for the funding to maybe upscale or uh, improve the system. And then uh, the last part of my project is, I think this part is uh, presented by Prof. Sarifuddin just now, uh, is the development of wireless uh, water monitoring system where we use the 3D printing technology and the sensors. So uh, the sensors that incorporate into this system is pH, conductivity, DO, uh, temperature, and turbidity. So basically this parameter is suitable to detect the early uh, the pollution, water pollution. So since it is cheap, basically uh, the whole concept is we can place along uh, the river and it can generate uh, maybe a big data to indicate the, the changes of the water quality. So this system uh, is able to send the data directly via uh, internet. Uh, we're having a problem to getting the grants to support this research. Uh, some of the system we use our own pocket money to build this system. And then uh, the lab testing is completed. So now it's moving to the second stage of uh, the real site testing. Unfortunately, uh, we are running out of grant. And uh, I tried to contact uh, my friends uh, from Innocence Technologies and Rian Berhad, and they are willing to support this uh, project. So we I just received uh, some of the parts to build another two to three units. Uh, this Innocence uh, uh, Technologies and Brian Berhad also uh, uh, support us with uh, one RA to continue this work. Unfortunately, uh, due to the 
locked down, the project is uh, stopped for the moment because we can't go out to uh, do the site testing. And then we have also presented this idea to FGV. Uh, they are interested. Uh, we are in the middle of discussion. Uh, they are interested with this project, so maybe uh, we'll see how it's go uh, in the future. Uh, that's all for my presentation. Uh, thank you very much. Pass it back to. Hello, hello. Hi. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Te, for a very interesting uh, topic here about wastewater treatments on using the IR 4.0. Right. Let's move to the uh, next speaker, uh, Associate Professor Dr. IR Hari Krishnan Ramya. So, uh, Professor Associate Professor Hara Krishnan is currently an Associate Professor at the Department of Electrical Engineering, New Team Malaya, working in the area of uh, RFIC, RFEH design. He received his uh, Bachelor of Engineering, Master's and PhD degree in Electrical and Electronic Engineering in the field of analog and also digital IC design from New State Science Malaysia in 2000, 2003, and 2008, respectively. In year 2003, he was with the uh, Cyrus Lab, St. Cyber Jaya. At year 2002, he was attached in the Intel Technologies, St. Jamberhat. Hara Kishan was the recipient of the Intel Fellowship Grant Award, 2000 until 2008. Hara Kishan is the Director of Center of Industry Research 4.0 or CRI 4.0 and the head of analog, digital and RF research group at University of Malaya. His work revolved in the providing expert solution to the industries in the strengths of IR 4.0. Through the uh, CRI 4.0, he regulated expert collaborative effort of the faculty in University of Malaya, outsourcing the solution to SNE and also the MNNC. He has produced silicon verified IP in the field of analog RF and also RFEH integrated circuit design. With a reputable research output and solutions, he has secured several international national industry grants from 2014 until today. He served as an associate editor in IEEE Assess in the in a recognition toward his research credibility. He is a chartered engineer and also the fellow of Institute of Electrical Technology, IET. He is also the professional engineer registered under the Board of Engineer Malaysia. He is the senior member of the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineer and member of the Institute of Electronics Information and Communication Engineer. His research work has resulted in several reputable technical publications in the field of electrical and electronic engineering. His main research interests include analog integrated circuit design, RFIC, WLSI system design, and also RF piezoelectrics, thermals, electromagnetic energy housing, power measurement module designs. So let us welcome uh, Associate Professor Hari Krishnan. Uh, Prof, the uh, floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you moderator, for the uh, lengthy introduction. So let me share my slides with you. Uh, so I hope that you can view the slides. Is it okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Uh, okay. Yep. Yeah. Can you? So, uh, ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I, uh, yeah, I will actually skip the introduction part of myself. I will just give you a brief introduction of uh, myself as the moderator have done a great job in introducing me. So currently I'm leading the uh, Center of Industry Research 4.0, CRI 4.0, which is under the TNCPNI. We actually regulate projects and also efforts between several faculties, and we are situated strategically at the engineering faculty. So my research work basically orientates in enabling uh, IoT and low power devices for wireless sensor networks and thus basically reviving or basically encouraging smart cities and smart uh, smart homes uh, encounters. 
So we are basically working here to encourage IoT deployment, intelligence deployment, and also enabling IR 4.0 pillars in many applications in line with the research works that we are carrying out here. So at CRI 4.0 and the research center, which I'm heading now, we basically work very closely with the industries and many of our grants are basically received from industries such as Intel, Motorola, and Osram, uh, not to mention some of the SMEs uh, such as LSF Technology and Asascom. We'll look into several of this project and how basically we regulate this project in order to, res to basically achieve the research outcome and uh, altogether the um, progress of IR 4.0 in the university and the country. So the pillars that we are concentrating at CRI 4.0 here is basically highlighted here with IoT taking a lead as the field of my personal interest, uh, followed by embedded system, sensor technology, artificial intelligence, and robotic. Many of our projects, and I must say all of our projects, revolves in this technological framework. So currently we have uh, basically forged good research collaboration with many MNCs and also government agencies along with the SMEs around. MITI would be the uh, pioneer for industrial forward experts. And I'm proud to say that CRF 4.0 is one of the many authorized center of excellence in IR 4.0 by MITI. So we have basically looked forward uh, in the collaboration of industry, and hence we have forged close research collaboration at CRI 4.0 with industries such as POSAT, Osram, MIMOS, ASASCOM, and many more in the line. So I would like to share with you some of the success story of CRI 4.0. So at CRI 4.0, basically we house a smart intelligent supply chain management prototype. So as the manufacturing industry takes a lead in the nation, today we basically um, are, are basically a manufacturing nation. So we see that there's a uh, shortfall in uh, manufacturing output and also chip packaging, where we basically see that Malaysia takes a lead in this industry. So manufacturing would be the backbone of our industry nature. So we are looking forward into imparting intelligence, machine learning, and also artificial intelligence in the manufacturing environment. And hence, with the collaboration of NITI, we have established a prototype lab at the Faculty of Engineering, visualizing this intelligence from the process of the supply chain management through intelligent visual inspection to intelligent logistic management. Many of these product or basically many of this setup here have been funded by MITI and some of these setup here have been also contributed by the industry such as POSAT, especially in the smart and intelligent logistic management system. So we are deploying uh, several IoT based edge computing nodes at this um, prototype in order to impart more intelligence in giving us out the essential readings or basically data which enables continuous remote monitoring uh, principle. So we have a smart logistic system at the lab and this is basically enabled through the use of basically an AGV or AIV system and also the RFID system in order to detect the product type and also the product weight which is stored in a vertical logistic system. So this is also visible in our center and this would be the highlight for many industry who comes and visit our center. So through this establishment of the prototype, we basically offer um, training and also upskilling for basically the, uh, the industry to upgrade their resources in the aspect of IR 4.0 and intelligence system uh, being deployed at the uh, manufacturing environment. So 
We have also uh, worked with MIMOS uh, in order to impart machine learning algorithm for predictive maintenance of induction motor, where basically we have deployed several nodes with the um, integration of sensor at the machinery in order to upload the huge data into the cloud computing system and big data analysis employed for uh, ease of remote monitoring system. So this is basically enabled through a small project uh, enabled through the collaboration with the industry MIMOS. So we have also taken up several prototype um, proof of concept project with our short term projects uh, dealt with our students, uh, such as the SMT PCB inspection with a robotic arm, smart energy management system, where we have developed the dashboard necessary for the industry in order to monitor the energy consumption by the, um, by the environment of the uh, factory setup. So we have also looked into automated screw machine uh, deployment, where basically the uh, deployment of the intelligence and also machine learning is essential in order to make, uh, uh, in order to enable decision making at this uh, production line. So we have also enabled fan-to-fan -fan automation through the access of remote monitoring system via the handphone. So. Some of our uh, projects are, or basically mini projects, I call it as, uh, are not limited uh, here. So we have also enabled gas leakage detection system using ultrasonic sound. These projects have been carried out by our interns and also the uh, undergraduate students, as it is deemed to be a mini project under the supervision of the industry. We have worked with Sam Dabi in order to build up a prototype of precision farming uh, in enabling monitoring system for quality management. So I would like to also highlight some of the ongoing project at CRI 4.0. We take pride of this uh, uh, ongoing project at CRI 4.0, which is very much aligned with the industry, be it the SMEs or MNCs. So we have basically forged a close relationship with OSRAM of those semiconductors in deploying remote asset monitoring system using RFID and GPS. Okay. We have basically um, looked into the uh, deployment of the hardware and also the software enabling the, uh, the precise identification or the location of the access management system in their factory environment. We have looked into the collaboration from the firmware expert in order to deploy a cost effective solution at the factory environment. The research question here is basically addressed in the terms of the system deployment. So the student will be able to actually uh, be close with the industry in order to achieve the research outcome that is necessary for his graduation as well. So this project is basically ongoing and it has been progressing well in the context of the industrial collaboration and also the milestone achievement. So. Another project that we have basically started off with an SME, Asascom Engineering Syndrome Bahad, is basically a smart ambience control system for basically air conditioning system in telecom towers. Asascom Engineering Syndrome Bahad is basically an SME which specializes in enabling base stations for telecom towers. So through this project, we will actually enable single node, obs um, uh, pre single node observation of the energy consumption and the environment changes in terms of temperature in optimizing the temperature of the air conditioning system, which is necessary to sustain the electronics which is uh, installed at the base station. So at the long run, we would like to enable several nodes, as you know, that basically the base station are deployed in terms of hundreds and thousands of nodes. So in the long run, we like to deploy uh, several nodes in order to uh, manage this big data in order to optimize and remote monitor the, um, opt the usage of energy by the air conditioning system. This is deemed essential in the view of 5G um, standards that is uh, said to becoming the, the top of the town soon after. 
Okay, so we have also encouraged student industrial project. We basically enable the student with the essential knowledge of IR 4.0, especially in the manufacturing environment through students industrial project. So some of our students industrial project uh, is basically highlighted here. We have uh, projects such as the RFID stabilizer for four D axis automation. This is basically uh, a setup which is essential at the manufacturing uh, environment at the supply chain management system in order to monitor the product which is pumped through the supply chain and so that efficient monitoring could be enabled. So we have also looked into uh, some of the supply chain simulation software, which is freely available, um, such as the FlexSim, in order to emulate the setup in the lab and to optimize it further in deploying uh, several technological nodes in uh, enabling machine learning and also intelligence. So we have also uh, realized real-time asset tracking system based on IME technology. This is also uh, is enabled to student industrial project and also the development of geolocation based item monitoring system using IoT location based sensors. So these are some of the mini projects that we basically encourage interns and undergraduate students to take up through the IDP project and the FYP project that is uh, regulated to the center. So there are some future projects of CRI 4.0, which basically I will uh, present to you in order to encourage more participation from the floor and also from researchers around UM. So we are looking into basically um, urban fish farming, or basically smart recirculating aquaculture system where we enable IoT devices or IoT monitoring system for remote monitoring in monitoring the health environment of this uh, fish farming system. Through this, uh, basically, we are not limited in terms of area and also location for basically fish farming, and we can also do it in the shop houses in urban areas as well. So this will actually enable the growth of IR 4.0 in the agriculture industry. So we are also looking real-time asset monitoring system using Rola one especially in the hard to reach places where internet connectivity is difficult to obtain. So these are the uh, projects that we are proposing to Petronas uh, and some other companies, uh, especially in the remote area of the uh, oil rig locations and so on. So these are the uh, future projects as we, we are looking at at CRI 4.0. So CRI 4.0 also would like to call to action in the aspect of the community services and also the financial constraint that is faced by the Excellence Center. So in terms of the community engagement, okay, we are also conducting frequent industry visits, but we are looking forward to increasing the amount. So, and this is enabled to the members, the effort, the collective effort by the members of CRI 4.0, not only myself as the head of CRI 4.0. And hence, I would like to urge the participation from the members of University Malaya to be part of CRI 4.0 in contributing and also benefiting out of the industrial collaboration effort that we are making here. So we are also looking forward for technical training uh, to be uh, conducted in-house and also abroad free internship program for the students and participating in more hackathons. So financially, okay, we would like to propose solution to industrial challenges through CRI 4.0, academic and industrial research collaboration is basically forged, which is basically um, already in line and ongoing. We would like to have more numbers of industrials aligned research projects to be coming in through CRI 4.0, to benefit the staff of University Malaya and also the revolution of IR 4.0. So we are looking forward for proposal for developing accreditation body for the technical training certification as basically a micro-credential center. CRI 4.0 would like to take a lead in IR 4.0 based training. So we basically constitute technical think tank for accessing and solving future research demand well in the Time. So being the founders or basically the founding member of iConnect, as basically the moderator have uh, announced earlier, CRI 4.0 takes a lead in IR 4.0 based uh, projects, which is aligned with 
industry. Being part of CRI 4.0, I assure that the members of University of Malaya will benefit from the uh, projects that is being uh, offered in line with the uh, revolution of IR 4.0 and the pillars that's defined through the uh, government agencies such as MITI and MOSTI itself. So we have also engaged with the students through the uh, ADAPT and Engineer program, and this is basically done in-house at the Faculty of Engineering. I would like to expand it to several faculties as well, be it the Science Computer, the Faculty of Sciences, and the Faculty of Business. So I think that's all from me uh, for now. I will pass back the floor to the moderator. Thank you for the opportunity to have given. I look forward for more collaborative effort from the members of University Malaya to CRI 4.0. Thank you, uh, Prof. Uh, Hari Krishnan. OK, so let's just move to our next speaker. Uh, yes, Dr. Haja Halili. Dr. Siti Haja Halili is a senior lecturer at University of Malaya. She was formerly with the, the, the research division in Prime Minister Department Malaysia. She holds a degree in information system management from University of Technology, Mara. Master in Education Technology and PhD in Adult Education Technology from UST Science Malaysia. Her work are published in ISI, Scopus, Malaysian, and also international journal, including IRR, ODL, IJLT, MJLM, TOJET, Procedure of Social and Behavioral Sciences, Australian Journal of Basic and Applied Sciences and etc. She has published books and chapter in books on Pembelajaran Belajar Dewasa Melalui Teknologi Sidang Video, Penggunaan Teknologi Maklumat dan Komunikasi Dalam Kalangan Masyarakat Miskin Bandar, etc. She has received awards such as Dean Award, Best Presentation Award, Excellent Service Award, Gold Award, the Most Outstanding Reviewer, Appreciation Certification from Certificate from Jabatan Pendidikan Selangor and Scholarship from My Brain 15 and USN Fellowship. She has wide experience in teaching and training in the area of educational technology. She also served as Chief of Editor of Journal Penyelidikan, Pendidikan and Article Reviewer for Educational Technology and Society. Malaysian Online Journal of Educational Technology and etc. She is the program coordinator for UST Open Distance Learning, ODL, and Master of Instructional Technology Program, Head of Auditor for Faculty of Education, and one of the committee members of UST Malaya Family Research and Development Center. Currently, she is active research and published in the FLIP learning educational technology, instructional design and technology, e-learnings, education 4.0, and also the adult learning and open distance learning. So without further ado, I want to uh, invite Dr. Siti Haja. The floor is yours, Dr. Siti. Okay, uh, thank you to Mr. Moderator. So I will share my screen. Thank you. So I do hope everyone can see my screen. Yeah, yeah. All right. Sure. Okay, thank you. Uh, so this is my uh, sharing uh, topic today. It's about education 4.0, which uh, it is much more related with the um, uh, industrial revolution 4.0. So again, I'm Siti Hajar Halili from Department of Curriculum and Instructional Technology, Faculty of Education. So before that, I will uh, give some overview about um, the education model. So for the 20th century education, education model, as you can see on the screen here, it's more focused on the content and assessment. Okay, the assessment is only perhaps like one or two assessments. But for the 21st century learning, so now we are in the 21st century. Okay, so the assessment, we can use um, uh, varieties of assessments in terms of formative, summative, you know, and it's also focused on the skills in terms of the life skills, learning and thinking skills, um, use the 21st century content content and core subjects, for example, like um, we do have like integration of STEM, TVET, and also the uh, 
the educators and the students, they must um, at least have the uh, literacy in terms of the use of ICT. So this is uh, the models of 20th century uh, with the 21st century learning. So why do we need to know about um, Education 4.0? Why is so important about Education 4.0? It is because um, Education 4.0, it is more focused on the future of education. So future of education, uh, it means that we need to prepare our graduates, our students for employability. For employability means for their job, for their work. So the university, okay, they need to align their teaching and learning practice and also their process uh, with the use of technological advancements. So what is actually the future of education 4.0 is that um, it must be blend the teaching and learning pedagogies with the use of 4.0. So what is pedagogy? Pedagogy is the method and practice of teaching. Okay, so previously, uh, 20th century, we only like use one or two pedagogy, but in the education 4.0, we have to use like sort of like meta strategy pedagogies. Okay, not only one pedagogy, but you can blend with the other pedagogy. So it is like the method of practice of teaching and blend together with the technology 4.0. So technology 4.0, this is only the example like the use of 3D printing. We do have that big data drawn. AR, IR and so forth. So this is what we call it as a education 4.0. Okay, so educators, they need to understand the pedagogy. Okay, what is the pedagogy, the method and practice of teaching and blend it with the technology 4.0 and then we call it as a, uh, the term of the education 4.0. So education 4.0, uh, we, uh, as I mentioned earlier, focus on the students, you know, to uh, let them have the uh, employability after they graduate. So we need to uh, build human capital enhancements to, uh, to be able to meet the knowledge and skill requirements requirements needed. For example, the knowledge is like knowledge productions and innovation applications of knowledge. They can be like invent, uh, um, inventor, they can uh, produce, uh, develop a product, you know, um, and also the skills. Okay, this is the example of top 10 skills of 2025. Uh, it is based on the World Economic Forum. So uh, the educators, okay, they need to uh, blend the tech teaching and learning pedagogies and also technology 4.0 in order for them to uh, build human capital enhancements to achieve uh, the requirements uh, needed okay uh, in the industry so we do we need we do have uh, to understand uh, what is the knowledge and also the skills okay needed um, in the future so this is what we call it as the education 4.0 so next one, how university, they can adapt to the demands of education 4.0. So in our University of Malaya, we do have uh, this program, remote learning. So remote learning is what we are, we are uh, practicing now, okay, because due to the pandemic COVID-19 uh, last year, everyone is like um, changing their mode of uh, teaching and learning practice from traditional uh, to the remote learning. All right, so I'm so happy because now all the educators, especially in Universiti Malaya, they can use uh, a lot of um, tools and applications in order for them to engage the student in their class. Okay, this is what we can introduce um, our students with the remote learning uh, to tally with the education 4.0 demands. And uh, currently, uh, University of Malaya also offer this ODL program. Um, um, some of the uh, faculties, okay, um, they are currently um, uh, doing this uh, ODL, do all the paperwork of this program. And I also one of the uh, experts been appointed by UMSET to assist UMSET in order for them to understand uh, uh, the, the ODL concept. And also um, the Education 4.0, also we can see in terms of um, offering the program of MOOC. Okay, so I think all of you know what is a MOOC. So this is how the university, uh, how they can adapt the demands of Education 4.0 is like, is that uh, they offer all these kind of programs to their students. So this is my um, area, which is a flipped classroom approach. So um, since I joined University of Malaya, okay, I've been introduced with this flipped classroom when I joined this uh, conference. But at first, uh, I, I'm not really sure what is flipped classroom. So this is what my imaginations about what is flipped classroom at first. But then I did some research, you know, to understand uh, what is a uh, flipped classroom. Then only I understand that uh, the flipped classroom is the um, activities, okay, more focused on the activities before the student attend to the 
class. So whatever activities, the learning materials will be given to the student before they attend the class. That is um, how we are uh, the plate classroom, uh, which is focused more on the activities. So in class, the instructor is only um, uh, do, um, uh, uh, they don't have to like uh, do a lecturing, but they just um, do activity with the students. Whatever the activity that they did must be tallied before uh, uh, the students attend the class. Meaning that all the learning materials will be given to the student. The student will do uh, revisions, or perhaps if that the lecturer uh, provide them with the video so they will watch the videos and then you will give them uh, instructions and in class you will do activities so there is a uh, much um, interaction engagement with your student in class so for this split classroom okay um since uh, last year also because of the covid 19 most of the teachers they conduct the flip classroom because um they need to understand uh, the students background if let's say they don't have any um in uh, difficulties in terms of the internet connection so they will provide them with the uh, whatever learning material first and then when they have the real time uh, synchronized learning they will only uh, do uh, discussions with the students no more lecturing so lecturing is before so they will conduct uh, they will um, uh, provide uh, the students with all the learning materials like video like notes and so forth before the the real time uh, synchronous learning happens so this is what we call it as a flip classroom so why uh, I, I want to share with all of you the flip classroom with the education 4.0 is that as you all, all know the evolution of industrial revolution 4.0 is start with the ir 1.0 IR 2.0, IR 3.0, and IR 4.0. The same goes uh, to the flip. Okay, so flip also it has its own uh, evolution. Okay, it evolves from the flip 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, and 4.0 is what I'm uh, currently doing uh, for this uh, flip 4.0. So what I can see the uh, evolution from the flip of 1.0 to uh, until uh, the flip 4.0 is that in terms of the contents. Okay, in terms of the meaningful of learning. Okay, for the flip 1.0, I can see that uh, the first, we just like to uh, digitize all the teaching and learning contents. Okay, uh, with the use of videos. Okay, so more time uh, safe and um, more focus on the teaching and learning process and, and do activities in class. So that is a flip 1.0. Uh, for the flip 4.0, um, I can see that um, uh, they use a lot of um, uh, OER resources okay or any available resources for example like open textbook open access journals uh, and so forth so that is a flip 2.0 Flip 3.0 is more focused on to uh, facilitating students uh, to have a meaningful learning by doing, by practice. For example, like has on uh, learning, experimental learning, collaborative learning, and um, uh, the 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 in terms of uh, the focus of learning also from personal to the mass space. This is how, what um, the MOOCs uh, uh, came in, okay, because of the Flip 3.0. And the Flip 4.0, it used um, a lot of meta strategy pedagogies. Okay, not only one pedagogy, but use of uh, different pedagogies and blend in your um, uh, teaching and learning uh, contents. And it utilized uh, the use of technological environment 4.0, and then uh, it um, uh, um, also consists of uh, content-rich resources. And also the more fo focus is that uh, the, the reflections of learning. Okay, so perhaps you can do like uh, the student will um, at the end, they will um, um, have their own e-portfolios, e-assessments, you know, so because uh, the flip 410 at the end, they want to know the reflections of your students learning. So this is the involvement of flip 1.0, 2.0, 3.0 to 4.0. So this is uh, my last slide. The conclusion is that, um, as you can see here, uh, the IR 4.0 until IR 4.0 and the uh, involvement of FLIP uh, 1.0, as you can see here, the handset also, uh, um, it evolves from the use of Nokia to our smartphone in terms of car also, the televisions, Okay, to the smart televisions. So, um, but some things which never change is like this lah, this one eh, nail clipper. So this one never change lah. I do not know, maybe from faculty of engineering, you know, you can do some um, innovations, you know, in terms of um, um, uh, this uh, nail clipper. I do not know in future. So uh, for my flip um, uh, study, uh, my area, I have a collaboration with um, um, my clique from Faculty of Engineering. Uh, we do have uh, collaborations under the IRG program. Uh, it is uh, the topic is about Flip Museum. So I think um, uh, most of our um, um, 
uh, faculty members okay been invited uh, um, to uh, do collaborations with other faculties okay to uh, uh, give some input okay in terms of um, that diversify the expertise and give the input in terms of the pedagogy part so i think uh, that is all from me thank you so much i return back to uh, the moderator Hello, thank you, uh, Dr. Siti, for a very interesting talk. Okay, so let's us uh, move to our next session discussions and also the uh, Q and A sessions for our forum. Uh, can all the speaker turn on their radio? Okay, for those who are just joined, so we have a very four uh, what call the uh, speakers, and I just realized that UM have a lot of talent here. OK, uh, they are very uh, dedicated on the research and teaching as well. So we have uh, the uh, four speaker today with Professor Sharifuddin, Dr. Tay, uh, Professor Harakishnan and also Dr. Siti. Right, OK. And I, I saw that the uh, presentation just now, OK, is very interesting. Each of us are playing an important role Going to the IR 4.0, right? And as uh, encouraged by our government and our industries player as well, they are committed, right, to move uh, toward the IR 4.0. However, there are some uh, resistance, right, uh, saying the IR 4.0 should not be the way. It will destroy our economy. In other sense, due to automations, a lot of people will lose their job, right. Uh, some job will be lost and so on. It will create a uh, chaotic. So I would like to ask the uh, the uh, speakers, what do you think about this uh, IR 4.0? People are uh, what we call disagree with that. That means they want to uh, how to say right to have more moderates instead of uh, IR 4.0. They want to be industry evolutions instead of uh, revolutions. They want to have uh, industry evolutions. That means uh, move slowly. Uh, what do you think about this? Because the uh, world cannot wait because they want a revolution instead of evolutions. So what do you guys uh, people are thinking? So we start with uh, Prof. Uh, Sharifuddin. Prof, you are muted. Can you turn on your mic? Prof, you are mute. Ah, okay, thanks. Okay, right. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, right, what we are facing today, uh, the Industrial Revolution 4.0, is um, is uh, actually an evolution. It is not a revolution because uh, Industrial Revolution, well, Industrial IR, they, they use the word revolution is there, but really it is an evolution from the very beginning uh, since the uh, Industrial Revolution in the... Uh, um, late 18th century yeah until today you don't get uh, for example um, a microprocessor used uh, by everybody uh, where everybody is able to program the microprocessor and solve their own problems in their own domain you don't get that uh, suddenly it is basically an evolution of many many years where each technology is built upon other technologies and if the worry that uh, this IR 4.0 is going to take your jobs away. If you look at if you look at history itself, from the very, very beginning, uh, the nature of jobs changes. Yeah. So uh, maybe we will uh, have a situation where uh, manual workers will not be relevant in the IR 4.0, but future generations. For example, I always tell my students today that unfortunately. Or is it fortunately? I do not know. Uh, we are living, you are living, students, uh, in a hyper competitive world, hyper competitive world where, where you know, uh, conventional wisdom, conventional uh, skills are no longer applicable. I wouldn't say applicable. They are no longer relevant 100%. Yeah? You have to know, you have to learn, and you have to have new skills 
which will enable you to be uh, competitive in today's world. So, for example, um, uh, in, in the sciences, in, in chemistry, of course, the, the, the subject of chemistry never changed. It's always the same. Talk about truly the mechanics, the learning, the, 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 the discovered it, and today it doesn't change. But it's all problems, which are uh, build up many different problems. You need technology to do that. Yeah. So um, the new skill that you need to have is not just a strong knowledge in the uh, basis of chemistry, for example, but you also need these new skills. Um, in today's world, I cannot imagine, maybe people will disagree with me, but I cannot imagine a new student, a new person coming into this new hyper competitive world to uh, be some to 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 be um, you know uh, ignorant in IT, for example. Yeah. So they have to have skills in IT. It is those skills that will enable them to be relevant in the age of IR 4.0. So yes, people who are manual workers. Who, who, whose, whom, whose jobs will be taken over by robots one day, yeah, they will lose their jobs. But new people who are coming and living in this new generation will have to have the skills to control those robots, to program them, to, to uh, uh, look for new solutions, to be innovative with these uh, um, uh, uh, technologies. You know, uh, These are the skills that new generation should have. So yeah, maybe you, know, you can get um, jobs being taken away, but for the new generation, you need to have new skills, right? So IR 4.0 is not really a revolution. It is an evolution. It starts from the very beginning until today, and it is actually a responsibility of the individual in, in himself or herself and then the nation to ensure that the coming generation will have the necessary skills to live in this hyper-competitive world, the world where IR 4.0 is is as relevant as uh, you know the food that you are eating. So uh, um, uh, yeah, there will be pros and cons, but uh, I believe this is something that 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 is part of life. It, it just evolves that way. Thank you very much. I hope it satisfies you. I mean, it satisfies yeah. every day the answers. Thanks, Harry, thanks. Okay, how about uh, uh, Prof. Hari Krishnan? What do you take on that? So. Uh... As it is highlighted, IR 4.0 is not something new. So we have moved forward from industrial 4.1.0, 2.0, 3.0, 4.0. IR 4.0 takes a highlight here because the pace of its movement. So if other revolution have basically taken a ease of space, uh, pace, you know, meaning that it have uh, been adopted slowly. IR 4.0 is taking an exponential pace because of the need in the industry and also the country in upgrading the economical output. So since it is going on in an exponential purpose, uh, basically on exponential basis, we have no time in order to actually debate whether this uh, is basically relevant to our industry need or our economical uh, need. Like it or not, it will actually take charge in time. So, but being said that, if you look back into the revolution of 3.0, there are places that is uh, basically electricity is not uh, extended to. There are places that internet connectivity is not extended to. And how we're going to achieve the revolution of 4.0 when 3.0 is not complete itself. So this is something that basically the nation and also the government and the country have to actually uh, recap. So as far as the job opportunity is concerned, answering your question, we should never see that the revolution of 4.0 basically takes up job and also uh, basically abandons the nation with, uh, with jobless individual. We have to look in the perspective of upskilling and upgrading the knowledge. So the existing resources should be upskilled and upgraded in order to adapt basically IR 4.0 based of job scope. In a, in, in a nutshell, okay, the companies should actually encourage their resources to upskill by actually providing the platform of training, training of the technology, training of the revolution and training of the understanding of IR 4.0. Many countries such as the government and uh, basically Germany, US and UK have taken this approach and they are 
basically very successful in order to upgrade the mindset, upgrade the skill set of the resources in order to basically embrace IR 4.0. And in and all, okay, the resources or the uh, the individuals in, in stake will actually upgrade the knowledge and also the job scope they are actually working in for the past few years. So IR 4.0 will not take your job away, rather than it will actually upgrade your job scope. Okay, uh, thank you. How about um, Dr. Siti? What do you think about this uh, IR 4.0, especially in the educations? Okay, from the ed education uh, part, okay, uh, we focus more on the three domains. We do have like cognitive, effective, and psychomotor. So I don't think so the robot can replace the teacher because <laughs> let's say the cognitive, yes, of course can, the robot can do that. For the psychomotor, yes, there's a movement, the activity also can do, but a uh, lacking of the effective skills. So I don't think so. I agree with uh, Prof. Sarifudi and Prof. Hari that uh, we're not um, degrading, okay, all the teachers say, but just to upgrade ourselves, okay, because the education form for zero, we do have the education skills, the education skills, we do, we need to have uh, the collaborations, uh, we have to instill the collaboration, the communication, critical thinking, and also the creativity, that is the important education skills in uh, education 4.0, okay, so for example, like um, students, okay, they want to, like uh, us, uh, Muslim, we want to recite Al-Quran, we still need uh, Ustazah, Ustazah, to teach us okay we need we cannot rely on uh, the um, what we call it, the technology or wherever the Al-Quran technologies you know we have all these things but still we need um, someone uh, who are knowledge in that field like Ustaz Mustaza to teach us on how to recite the Al-Quran okay so I agree with uh, Prof Hari and Prof Sharifuddin uh, now we just like to we need to upgrade ourselves in order to stay uh, st I mean stay alive in this revolution in terms of our life our work and our communication. I think that's all. Thank you, Dr. Siti. Uh, how about Dr. Tay? What do you think about this? Uh, you know, they destroy our work. You know, those people are resistance uh, uh, to this uh, IR4. Okay, okay, just a short one. Basically, I agree with Prof. Sarifuddin, uh, Prof. Hari and Dr. Siti. But basically, uh, the biggest hurdle or the miss uh, uh, understanding about IR 4.0, uh, it started from, I think, uh, school. Because in the school, maybe we do not have a, a program or anything to introduce the concept of IR 4.0 to the students. And then when they come to the university and then we talk about IR 4.0, it's like people are afraid of uh, those things. And then even though uh, based on our experience, we uh, offer a few projects uh, regarding to the IOT to the students and then people just uh, resist it. And then um, there is a reason why we start all short of uh, a training program uh, to encourage students to come to uh, the makerspace. And then when they come to the makerspace, they understand what is the technology and then they are feeling, they feel interested. So just like uh, Miss Anjan Lu, the one that uh, created the, the auto titrator, so she can done it very well. So with uh, no background on uh, electronics. So basically, uh, I think in the Western country, they have start with, uh, we, we, we still calling it STEM, S-T-E-M. But uh, in, um, in the Western country, they have started to incorporate like uh, 3D printing and then they call it uh, STEAM. So where they incorporate the, uh, the elements of art into uh, the syllabus. So even though uh, the, in the secondary school, primary school, they have started to learn the 3D printing and so on. I think that that is a good platform to introduce to our uh, younger generation on what is IR 4.0. Uh, I think that's all for me. Okay, thank, thank you, you uh, Dr. Tay. That means, uh, in short, uh, uh, IR 4.0 is necessary, right? So we need to move with the time, right? Okay. Uh, what to is like for example here, I. Just today, I just know that the uh, UM have a lot of talent, you know, uh, people are uh, doing in a different area of this IR 4.0, right? Uh, I just wonder how, let's say, for example, how we can, uh, you know, accumulate all these talent together and start a projects. For example, there's the uh, Prof. Shaifudin had mentioned about the uh, uh, using this uh, technology to sense wastewater. And then uh, Prof. Hari Krishnan also mentioned 
he do some uh, this is a chip port and so on on the uh, using the IR 4.0 to monitor and so on and so forth. And then I saw from uh, Dr. City also talk about the educations and then Dr. Tay as well talk about wastewater treatment and so on. How can we as a new so, there are so many talent in UM. How can we is it, uh, work together? I know Sh Prof. Shai Fudeng have their his centers and Prof. Hari Krishna have his own centers and Dr. City have also his own center. How can this uh, center come together, work together? Okay, what's the opportunity here? Because we don't want people work in silo. That means uh, this center is doing this and then another center is doing that. But they can come together and work together, right? To uh, start a, a projects that are, that are, I mean, the good projects and working together and apply grant together, right? What do you think of uh, Shai Fudins? Do you have any idea how to, how can we uh, do this? <clears throat> okay, um, I think the university has uh, long talked about uh, you know, getting researchers out of their silos and working together. But uh, I'm, I'm not sure whether it is working well. I have a feeling that it is not. I mean, scientists still have this, this uh, tendency to sit in their silos. If they were to go out, they will probably just jump, just you know, climb out and uh, go to the next one, which is the nearest silo. If I'm talking about chemistry, I will only talk to uh, a biochemist, for example. Yeah. So I don't go very far. I don't go to Dr. Hari Krishna to, 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 exactly. to, to ask him to uh, you know, work with me. But actually, one of the things that allow one of the things that allow us to actually work together is exactly IR 4.0. You know, because each and every one of us will find IR uh, IR 4.0 uh, uh, relevant in uh, solving our research problems. Yeah. Now, now that I know that uh, the, the, the Dr. Hari Krishnan is working on, uh, uh, on on LoRa, for example, yeah, I mean I've talked to Dr. Tay about using LoRa for our water quality research. You know, the uh, to sending the data, especially when you have uh, uh, where we em we employ our modules in uh, in uh, you know places which are very far from uh, from civilization, right? So uh, it's very difficult to actually pass the data. Um, we can use um, you know. Uh, GSM or, or you know 4G or 5G for, for our data transfer, but it's going to cost a lot. So LoRa is one of the, the examples that we are thinking about, but we don't have the expertise to do that. So maybe after this, we will talk to Dr. Hari Krishnan. Suddenly, I find him relevant to my work, right? Yeah. Uh, maybe Dr. Hari Krishnan, who's working in 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 the in the you know uh, in uh, um, uh, the the field is quite different from mine. He's talking about uh, industry. Yeah. So he's not going to be interested working with Dr. Tay, who's working on water quality treatment, not not directly. But Dr. Tay can see in Dr. Hari Krishnan the relevance of uh, getting his expertise. So maybe it's going to be one way, but Dr. Hari Krishnan himself will find another relevance to another person. So it might not necessarily be a two-way, you know, uh, communication, but it could be one way. But at least we are out of our silos and we begin to work together. Yeah. So uh, IR 4.0 is actually a very good platform for us to start to work together. Yeah. So in 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 this case, in in today's uh, um, uh, meeting, for example, uh, I can find relevance in Dr. Dr. Siti Hajar's talk. Why? Because Dr. Te was saying that we need to educate our students uh, in IR 4.0. And I would love to have Dr. Siti Hajar's experience in uh, designing, say, for example, a curriculum for us to integrate IR 4.0 into our courses. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. As far as research is concerned, yes, I can go to Dr. Hari Krishnan and talk to him about, OK, how are we going to incorporate LoRa into our water quality uh, modules, for example? So it is a good platform, IR 4.0, in ensuring that we can work, um, well, at least inter silos, you know? Silos can be quite far away, but we can we can start working because there is uh, 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 something of relevance to all of us. Yeah. So if there is no IR 4.0, if there's no use of technology, for example, then why should I work with Dr. Hari Krishnan? There's no there's there's no um um tidak ada kesamaan yeah? <laughs> that allows this this working together. But now we can see it. Yeah. So actually, this is a very good platform. Okay. Uh, yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you, Prof. Shaifuddin's. So uh, we have four, fiscal, four speakers today. I'm Dr. Juan uh, from the uh, Deputy Dean of this uh, 
Fanta Natural World. If you have any questions, right, you may ask the speakers or post your questions. I will ask the speaker as well. Okay. So let's uh, move to uh, uh, Professor Hari Krishnan's. How about you, your thought on that? You know, we have a lot of talents, but it seems that we are not working together. Uh, and as mentioned by Prof. Sharifuddin, I4.0 will be a good uh, start uh, for us to uh, work together. What do you think, uh, how, we are, how can we strengthen uh, this uh, collaborative work in UM? Dr. Har Hari Krishnan? Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, so I will welcome everyone, actually. Uh, I guess the network is bad here. Yeah? Okay, I will welcome everyone to actually collaborate with CRI 4.0. Every faculty, every research area which is which finds relevance in IR 4.0 are welcome in CRI 4.0. Sad to say, I am also one of the culprit which actually worked in silo before heading CRI 4.0. So uh, in my own research group, I have worked in silo and basically we have achieved uh, commendable output as well. And basically the need and also the exposure uh, to work in a group and also collaborate between each other was not seen uh, earlier. But like what Prof said, okay, IR 4.0 has forged it, meaning that IR 4.0 is a interdisciplinary research field. So with this, I have to actually call upon the experts from various faculty, faculty of computer science, faculty of sciences, faculty of business, in order to complete, uh, basically to contribute collectively to the uh, project that is brought forward by the industry per se, because the project that is being brought forward by industry cannot only be solved by individual research expertise, but multi research expertise. So um, we have, these obstacles and we have these challenges in getting the right person in to actually conduct a project. So as far as CRI 4.0 is concerned, we are trying our best to actually network the researchers and also the um, research works with the industry, which is approaching us with the solution in mind. So um, we should have more of this kind of webinars. We should have more of this kind of talks and exposure, which is organized by the research clusters, encourage more of the researchers, especially the young researchers to attend it and see the relevance, whether they can actually work with the center or not. So this will actually encourage um, group research rather than silo research. So I guess UM is not only taking the road ahead basically the lead in the ranking, we are also taking the lead in silo based research. And I don't see this is happening in many other IPTA and IPTAs uh, around us as well. So we should actually break through this barrier and en encourage uh, group based research, especially in the field of IR 4.0. So CRI 4.0 welcomes all to actually participate and benefit from the projects that we are conducting and also the grants that we receive from the industry. OK, it might be a small grant, but yet it is worthwhile to actually work with the industry and look into the on site solution that your project can bring into. So this is my opinion. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Uh, Hari Krishnan. So as mentioned, uh, Prof. Hari Krishnan welcome everyone to work with him. And he also uh, looking for uh, collaborators uh, in UM and also uh, outside UM. So how about uh, Dr. City, uh, your education 4.0 is also very important. And I mentioned by Prof. Sharifuddin and uh, Dr. Hari Krishnan, that can be incorporated into their research work because uh, people are not well, did not well understand what is the uh, you know, education form of this uh, IR 4.0, right? You may start with some, uh, you know, because you have, with your experience, you can start something that are uh, more educational. That means uh, uh, can be incorporated into their uh, research work as well. Okay, the city. Okay, uh, from education, okay, we can provide insight in terms of the pedagogy and curriculum. Okay, we can like uh, sort of like incorporate the educational modules, okay, with other fields, sort of like uh, inter interdisciplinary. It's just that we need to find the right persons to collaborate, okay, because uh, for education, we uh, most of us we are lacking of ICT uh, equipment of. Uh, facilities but maybe other faculty they do have all these technological advancements 4.0 so um 
we need a uh, different fields or expertise to provide um their their insight you know the procedures to conduct this inter interdisciplinary research and uh for our side we can uh give our input in terms of the pedagogy and curriculum we do have a, uh, our uh pedagogies you know how to conduct or maybe you have your own pro you have your innovation you have your product but you do not know how to fully utilize the product uh, in uh, uh, uh which is related to the educational aspect so from education we can provide them with the pedagogy and the curriculum itself all right so i think that's all that's all from me yeah thank you so yeah yeah it's very good that means from your education also you can work with others that are showing the uh, experiment type how the uh, education and then ir 4.0 how the thing is working how this automation is working basically based on the experimental work right Dr. Tay, what do you think about uh, this uh, collaborative work in UM? We are so have so many talents here, you see. I didn't before that I didn't know Dr. Hari Krishna is doing this. I don't know yourself are uh, doing this, you know. Why is uh, you know how can we uh, in UM how can we work together, right? From this uh, you know, start from starting from this uh, seminar. Right? How can we do work together starting from this seminar? Yeah. I, I believe um, in UM it is hard for us to get the information like what field of uh, research are, other people are doing. So I think uh, in my opinion, this uh, research rockstar tour is a good platform for us to share. At least uh, for today, I know that uh, uh, Dr. Hari, is, uh, Prof. Hari is working on the IR 4.0 and Dr. Siti are working in uh, uh, Education 4.0. So we need the, to disseminate the information, especially on what we are doing. So this Rockstar uh, tour is uh, actually is a good platform. I just hope that cluster can promote more so that more can uh, more staff can participate uh, at least to hear our talks and then to get the information on what we are working on. And then this can be a good platform to start the collaboration. Okay, thank you. Uh, Dr. Tay, actually we will have this uh, seminar every month, uh, end of month, normally end of the month. Next one will be having in the uh, School of Science as a co-host. Uh, we are talking about will be in the AI, artificial intelligence. So, yeah, so we will uh, have it every month with distant team. Okay, uh, and then I think in you, that's why we want to start something that is uh, relevant in our societies and also the uh, what we are having the trend now. So uh, let's move to the next topic. In, in terms of uh, research, right, okay, or grant applications, as I mentioned just now, there are grant opportunity, right, uh, organized by these uh, uh, ASM, Academic Science Malaysia, Nano Malaysia, and also the Crest, okay. So I would like to ask these, um, you know, is it the, uh, the problem with the uh, Malaysia, is it lacking of grants or is it lacking of opportunities? Or is it lacking of talent working in RR 4.0? What is the main hurdles in Malaysia context uh, to bring in forward the IR 4.0? Uh, Prof. Saifuddin, again, you can start uh, on this matter. Um, uh, do we lack money? Uh, we have money, but we don't have that much of it. Yeah. So that means there will be more competition among those who are, um, you know, um, um, fucking for the money. So uh, um, money is not really a problem because now the problem is this. The problem is um, convincing those who are uh, the decision makers of where the money should go. Uh, that I think that is the problem. Uh, from my experience of, of looking at uh, research proposals, um, many of the research proposals that I look at are good research proposals. Um, the ideas are, are, are good. Uh, there's a future for the ideas, but it is um, the grants are badly written, for example. Yeah. So it's quite difficult to actually justify a portion of the money to go to this person or this group um, even though the ideas are good, but the way the ideas are presented, it sort of relieves this uh, confidence that you have in this group of delivering what they promise to deliver. Yeah, So it is not so much about not having money, 
it is actually making sure that you have the ability to convince those who are the decision makers to give you part of the money. Yeah. So the grants are there. I mean, every single day. So you, seriously, if you open emails, there will always be emails from from uh, from your part. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Copy, you know? Every single day. This grant, that grant, this grant, that grant. You know. Uh, there are a few people who uh, uh, who when 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 he or she looks at the the emails. Uh, they will either ignore or actually, uh, you know, uh, uh, pay attention to the to the emails. Those who ignore will see the the grants as irrelevant to them. Yeah. Ah, this is about education or this is about uh, ag agriculture. It's not part, part of my job. You know, so I won't. I just I won't get money. But then these are the people who complain again. Ah, there's no grant, no grant. You know, <laughs> actually there are grants. It's just about thinking creatively and. Uh, innovatively to think about how you can apply the grant with your expertise to the fields where the grants are offered. Yeah. So it is really about you being able to convince the people who decide to give the money. Yeah. So it's about good writing skills, of course. It's about having really good, brilliant ideas, yeah, innovative ideas, and the ability to convince the people who are giving the money that this innovative idea is an idea that is relevant now. You know, you should give me money because it is relevant now. Just to give you a, a, a sort of a, um, another a short story. Lah. Do you guys know that the uh, the technology, the cellular technology, yeah, cellular technology has been around since before World War II, you know, and uh, 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 AT&T, yeah, AT&T, has already applied to the American government to give them money to develop cellular technology. That was in, in the 40s, you see. But because at that time the government was busy with television, they sort of you know, brushed it aside. And only about 40, 50 years after that, cellular technology starts to go come into the picture. Whereas the technology has been around for quite a while. Yeah. So innovation is not necessarily something that can be realized immediately. It requires you to be able to convince people who have money to give you the money, to tell them that this technology or this innovation is relevant. So that is why for someone who always thinks that there's no money available, look at any grants offered and see whether you can innovate, right? And come up with good proposals so that those grants, which is or which are initially, you know, it doesn't seem to be relevant to you, it can become so relevant to you. There are a lot of stories about innovation that starts off as irrelevant stories, but later on, you know, starts to uh, to, to manifest themselves as, as you know, the, the real innovation. And so it's, 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 it's about that, to me, in my opinion. Okay, thank you for sharing for this. That means it's the, uh, not about money, it's about people, right? It's a bit of mentality of the people uh, sure. applying for the uh, money, okay? And how about you, Prof. Uh, Hari Krishnan? Yep. Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Prof. Sharifuddin. And right, I agree with him, right? Um, basically, the opportunity in terms of the grants and also the finance is there. It's basically how the researchers basically bring forward themselves. So I will urge basically the researchers to not to be dependent on grants and also the funding which is uh, provided by the government or the university, but to go out and search for industrial based funding. So that is basically where the opportunity lies and where the collaboration can be aesthetically fostered. So I myself will actually go around with the industry and market the output and also the outcome of the center and also the research work so that I can uh, attract more industry to invest further in terms of industrial grant. So there's ample of opportunity for the industry uh, in terms of grants which is given to us, but yet uh, we fail to go and reach out in terms of uh, the marketability of our research output and work. For the young researchers, I will actually urge uh, the young researchers to actually um, aligned with uh, research groups so that they can actually build up their research track in terms of IPs, papers, and also the reputation necessary before they go out, head out into the uh, industrial and uh, search for grants and opportunities. So I myself, uh, I feel that uh, 
I, I'm more complacent in getting the in, uh, grants outside through the industry and also the available grant. And I always fail in getting the grants such as IRG and also the internal grant. I don't know how basically maybe the standards of marking internally is much more higher compared to outside. So I will urge the researchers to actually go and seek funding outside and change the mindset, align our research with the current need of the industry. Uh, I understand the need of the fundamental research in publishing, but then we have to actually be creative in finding the research contribution in line with the contribution that is highlighted by the industry. By changing this mindset, we can also publish and also deliver to the industry at the same time. So this is something that uh, we have to encourage the researchers to undertake a change of mindset and look for opportunity outside for the grants and also the opportunity of collaboration. That's all from me. Thanks, Dr. Uh, Dr. Siti. OK, um, my opinion, I agree with Prof. Sarfuddin. OK, grants are there every day. If we open our email, so they will like uh, post any grants, you know, local, internationally. Um, but then we need to uh, like pay attention to the scope of the grant with our expertise. Like uh, for myself, perhaps you can like um, include uh, co-researchers uh, from other faculties or maybe from other departments. Like for myself, I'm from Department of Curriculum Instruction Technology. So for my grants, if I want to apply, maybe I will like uh, collaborate with other departments like for counseling. Maybe they have the idea about mental stress, you know, with the use of technology. So try to collaborate with other co-researchers from other departments or other faculties and then try to convince. Maybe we can convince them that, that this is a like uh, sort of like interdisciplinary research and uh, we can come up with a good proposal because we have the ideas of uh, uh, expertise from uh, different fields, diversify the, the expertise. And then I also agree with Prof. Harim, we perhaps we can, I, I know I, 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 I also can, uh, thank you Prof. Harim for sharing this. Maybe I can, after this, reach out for any industrial grant, you know, to, uh, to find uh, industry grant, builds, uh, builds up any co collaboration with the industry perhaps in future. So thank you Prof. Harim for sharing that. So I think that's all from me, uh, moderator. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Cities. How about Dr. Tay? What's the big uh, hurdle for you, or what do you think that is a hurdle that they are uh, moving forward for the IR 4.0? Uh, I agree with Prof. Hari. So when we fail in applying uh, the grant from the government, it's the best way for us is to go out to the industry to look for the collaboration. Because I'm just like Prof. Hari, I'm not. I have no luck in uh, UM internal grant from IRG, ULRG, but uh, at the beginning, all my grants are come from uh, the, the KPT and even the science fund. And then when we come to the water sensor uh, project, uh, we apply to the UM internal, like sort of PRGS is get rejected. And then we apply for the PRGS from the KPT is also get rejected. So we have no choice. Uh, sometimes we, if, a small electronic component, we still can use our own pocket money to buy because it's not expensive. But at some point when we have completed uh, the first stage of testing, so now it's for us to move to the, the real site testing. So this is where no matter how we need funding. So if we want the project to go on, we have to look for the funding. So the best way is try to talk to the industry or the private company. So I managed to find uh, Innocence and Remember Hut, and they're willing to support us with uh, the, the parts and as well as uh, the salary. So he's, this company also willing to promote our project to uh, like the company like FGV just now. So uh, linking with uh, industry is not only uh, getting uh, for funding, but we can look for more opportunity from outside. Uh, that's all for me. Thank you, Dr. Tay, uh, for uh, the, the comments. It seemed that the uh, from the four speaker, the uh, money is there, but we need to be creative getting the money, especially uh, look for the industry partner or industrial grant, right? Okay. Uh, that means we are in Malaysia, there are a lot of talents, especially you have 
uh, there are four of talents, right? So we need a money as a catalyst to boost up the uh, what we call this uh, IR 4.0. Okay. So uh, any last remarks? Okay. Uh, any short up uh, last remarks from the speaker? Well, I start with uh, Prof. Arifuddin. Can you give us a uh, short remarks? Is possible just a one or two sentence? What is the take home message? Uh, to the uh, others, uh, uh, participants here. Uh, Prof, your 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 mic is mute. Prof. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so all are welcome to the maker space um, because we feel that um, from the experiences of um, a lot of other people, other universities, uh, the maker space is the place where uh, innovation and creativity is actually born. They are actually born in a place where people can and make uh, this world a better place. Yeah. So for everything, for your teaching and learning and for your research or for fun, you are all invited. Please come and, you know, the more people coming into the makerspace, the merrier it will be. And I think it will be very, it will have a very positive uh, effect on the university, especially on the nuance of teaching, learning, research, and uh, uh, inculcating the maker culture. Sure, Prof. Shaibani, uh, we will take notes. Hopefully, we can have like a family day in your maker space. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, yeah. okay, our uh, Prof. Uh, Hari Krishna, how about you? The last uh, take home message. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for the opportunity given. CRI 4.0 thank the moderator and also the organizer for the opportunity given in basically introducing the research work and also the expertise of CRI 4.0. Similarly with Prof, we also welcome this collaboration in CRI 4.0 from all aspects. Uh, no research is insignificant. No research is small. So just think big how to market it. So CRI 4.0 would basically like to enable it with the collaboration of interfaculty, interdisciplinary and over so that we can actually bring it up for uh, bigger collaboration, such as industrial collaboration and perhaps commercialization itself. So um, we thank the moderator and the research cluster to actually organize this webinar. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, for uh, Hari Krishnans. Uh, Dr. Siti. Okay, uh, thank you to the moderator and the organizer for this uh, great, uh, program, Research Rock Star Tour, first series. So uh, from my um, education side, so all of you are welcome to collaborate with us. Okay, not only with me, but with my other colleagues. We are strong in terms of the pedagogies, and we are now using a lot of meta strategy pedagogies, uh, also helping, uh, assisting other faculties in terms of how to incorporate educational modules. You have all the products, maybe lacking in terms of the pedagogy and education curriculum. So all of you are welcome to collaborate with all of us. If you want to have contact, so if let's say you want to find someone who are expert in mathematics, you know, so can just contact me. So I'll give you uh, the, the, the connect connection with all of them. So thank you very much to the moderator and organizer for this wonderful research program, Rockstar. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Siti. You can uh, post your one call link in the uh, chat box. So other people can contact you or your center. Okay, Dr. City. Uh, Dr. Te. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I'm part of the makerspace, as Prof. Sai Pudin said. Uh, we're not only limited to uh, students, all staff, lecturer, and then uh, supporting staff are all welcome to our makerspace. Just contact us. We will show you something interesting about uh, IR 4.0. And then uh, for my own research, uh, as I presented just now, I'm working on the water treatment and I have been working in uh, uh, mass spectrometry for more than 10 years. So if anything, anyone needs help on this uh, mass spectrometry, can feel free to contact me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. T. Uh, I think uh, all the speakers have uh, presented their wonderful uh, works on the IR 4.0, right? Uh, my final remark here is the IR 4.0 is a uh, is thing moving forward. Uh, whether we like it or not, there will be a IR 4.0 replacing 
uh, the, what we call the IR 3.0. Okay, as mentioned, we have IR 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, and we are coming uh, in IR 4.0. And the uh, pace, right? Uh, the rate is very fast because due to the advancement of our technologies and so on, the pace is very fast. So we need to uh, what we call engage with the IR 4.0. Okay. Uh, and we should in UM, there are so many talents and we should uh, work together. Okay. Of course, we should work together in UM and also outside UM. As I mentioned by all the speakers, uh, the culture of working silos is no longer acceptable nowadays. So we should uh, work in groups. Uh, we should have a uh, form of social science as well. Okay. Uh, we may look at the social perspective on the R4.0, how the uh, social people uh, think or uh, how we are thinking of this R4.0. Uh, so this is the come to the end of our sessions. I also want to remind that the uh, next uh, month, uh, 23rd of September, Thursday, we will have another Rockstar series on AI, artificial intelligence. Okay, so put in your diary, 23rd of uh, September, okay, on this uh, Rockstar tour. And also I want to remind again, there are seminar, okay, organized by ASM, and also the Crest, and, and also the uh, Nano Malaysia, and the uh, Industry 4.0, iConnect Network, okay. So this is a very good opportunities, as we discussed here. There are also grants and also uh, what we call uh, breakout sessions. That means we can also have a discussions and collaborative with the industries. This is not meant for university as only, but also other industry player. So please uh, register yourself. It's not too, it's not uh, late. You still can register yourself and also participate in this uh, in this uh, seminar or networking. So this is for me. So I back, pass back to the chairman, uh, Prof. Norma Riza. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Juan, here yeah, for successful uh, moderating the session. Okay. And uh, I agree with you, Dr. Juan. Uh, I also find uh, the speakers uh, have a very insightful sharing. And I hope the participants uh, will benefit uh, from the session, especially when it comes to the, uh, the opportunity, uh, the collaboration opportunity, and also using some facilities uh, in IR 4.0. So IR 4.0 is a very much interdisciplinary field. So, uh, so I think this is a very, very, uh, very good platform yeah, to unite yeah, for those who are interested yeah, to to do this uh, IR four point zero field. So I would like to thank again, yeah, Dr. Juan and uh, the four speakers here yeah, uh, for making uh, this event a success. And before we end the session, uh, we would like to have a photo session. Yeah, and I would like to have your cooperation uh, to switch on your uh, video. Camera. Okay, uh, Haryana, you give the instruction here? Uh, yes, boss. Okay. <laughs> okay, uh, everybody, yeah. switch on. Do you have everybody now? Uh, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> gentlemen, I think that wraps up our morning. So on behalf of our research cluster, I would like to thank all of you here for making time yeah, in your busy schedules to join, to join us this morning. So it's been our great pleasure to host the event and I wish you all a pleasant day. See you next time. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Thank you and stay safe. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you very much. much.